uh, as the saying goes, two's company, three's a crowd. And that's clearly the case for the 2024 GOP presidential primary field. Uh, the former president, Donald Trump, getting the crowded field of Republican, pre uh, Republican presidential candidates that he wanted. And it could help pave the way for him to win the party's nomination again. Meantime, Republican presidential candidates are hitting the campaign trail this week in Iowa, first in the nation caucus. And that is where we find Kelly Meyer, who is live once again in Des Moines, starting to become her second home. Hi there, Kelly. <laughs> I already have a preferred hotel here, so we'll just keep coming back to Iowa. I think this is going to be the, the second of many trips back here. And it's also, I think, the third of many trips for Florida Governor Ron DeSantis and former President Donald Trump. I think that's about the number. They've been here before, just missing one another. Then there was the rally that uh, Trump was supposed to have, the dueling rally with DeSantis, and that yep. was canceled due to okay, the tornado cool. watch. And, how long do we and have now this? they're back again. Uh, they're both going to be here for the event this week here in Iowa, the campaign kicking off for DeSantis tomorrow night right here in Des Moines. And then him and Trump just missing one another on Wednesday night when Trump arrives. He's set to hold events with voters on Thursday morning uh, at a breakfast in Urbandale. Uh, but as you were saying, this crowded GOP field may only work to uh, former President Trump's advantage here. The more candidates, the more likely the vote will be split. Uh, the campaign seems to think the more the merrier and the better the results for former President Donald Trump in the end. Now, they're also rushing the GOP hopefuls to Iowa Republican Governor Kim Reynolds' side. Uh, she isn't endorsing anybody, but everybody is going to meet with her, have events with her. She's been with uh, Vivek Ramaswamy. She's also been with uh, Nikki Haley, uh, DeSantis we saw her with just a few weeks ago. Now, as we said, no plans to endorse anybody until uh, the Iowa caucuses early next year. And the same goes for for Iowa Republican Senator Joni Ernst. She isn't endorsing anybody, but she's inviting both those declared and prospective Republican candidates out to her roast and ride this weekend, a motorcycle ride and a pig roast. Some of those that are going to be attending are Nikki Haley, South Carolina Senator Tim Scott, and former Vice President Mike Pence, News Nation is told, more set to be announced this week. We don't know yet if uh, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis is going to be there because he has a four-day, 12-city trip uh, from Iowa. He goes on to New Hampshire and then on to South Carolina. So we'll see if he makes it back here to Iowa. You guys. All right. Kelly Meyer in uh, Iowa once again for us. Kelly, thank you. Uh, what do you make of this, Michael? Um, you know, is this, as, as the great Yogi Berra once said, is this deja vu all over again with the field piling up for Donald Trump? Yeah, over and over. I think it's important for us to always remember you know, when I was there with President Obama, the Democrats and Republicans have different rules when it comes to the caucus. The Republicans have winner take all. So more candidates in the field is better for Trump. Uh, now, when you have the, the rhetoric on, on the side of DeSantis and others, uh, they're going to be put in a spot of what makes them different from him. And I have not heard any of them be able to articulate in this primary why would they be better than Donald Trump? And the challenge that's going to emerge very quickly is that they're going to have to go further right without actual answers or solutions. And Trump will be able to sit there and, again, always reminding people, this is when to take on their side. Until someone can show me they can get to that 30 percent threshold, well, I don't see how you do it. Well, it's, it's, yeah. it's interesting, Rena, because you, you hear Ron DeSantis and, and his campaign and the Super PAC, what they're trying to do. They're trying to position Donald Trump as a liberal. Right. So they're they're trying to put themselves uh, way to the right of Donald Trump. But you got to wonder if that votes or if that works, because voters know what they saw for four years when he was the president of the United States. It, we have such short term memories as <laughs> as Do an we? electorate <laughs> at large. And I think that's where we are with the state of play. Uh, you know, that's what they're banking on. A lot of uh, these candidates that are entering the field, they, they want to believe that these voters will take the word right now. And the word really is, is that there are other palatable solutions. But how do you go up against somebody that understands the system by now? And that's Trump. And these state party committees are doing his bidding for him by making it more likely for this winner to takes all system to remain in place. And I hate it. I, I'm a big of I'm a big fan of ranked choice voting, I must say. I think it's like um, 20 or 21 states, something like that, winner take all. It, it, you know, it is. And, and I think that's that's troubling because this argument for ranked choice voting, and this is now, okay. this is a premature conversation, uh, because now conservatives see it as a tool of the progressive and the left. And so we have such a long road ahead of us for any sense of sensibility to be injected in this GOP primary process. But right now, I'll just say this, uh, everybody understands that Donald Trump can't win in general election. So we'll see. that's where we're at. All right. Thanks for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to subscribe. Click the red button to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.